If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. Perhaps the first thing that we can do in solving this question is to write down our known values. So for example, we know that the volume is 400 centimeters cubed, so we can just come off on the side and write V equals 400. We know that the pressure is 80 kilopascals, so we can say that P is equal to 80. And then we also know that the pressure is decreasing at a rate of 10 kilopascals per minute. Now whenever you see the word rate, that means that you're going to be taking the derivative of some quantity with respect to time. And in this case, that quantity is the pressure. And so we can come over here and write that dp dt is equal to 10 kilopascals per minute. The fact that it's decreasing actually means that this rate has to have a negative value to it. So these are the three known values. We can next turn to the equation given in the question. And we'll notice that we have the product of the pressure and the volume. And because we have the product, we're going to have to use the product rule when calculating the derivative of this side of the equation. As a reminder, the product rule tells us to multiply the first function times the derivative of the second, and then add that to the second function multiplied by the derivative of the first. In this case, the first function would be p, and the second function would be the v to the 1.4. So let's follow the product rule and differentiate the left side of this equation. Remember that we're taking the derivative with respect to time, so it's a special type of derivative in essence. So here we go, we're going with the first function, which is just p, multiplied by the derivative of the second function. Now the derivative of the second function, in order to calculate it, we would pull the 1.4 down in front, we would write v, we would subtract 1, which is going to give us 0.4, and then we would have to multiply because this is a related rates problem, by the derivative of v with respect to time. So that'll be dv dt. And then we have plus the second function, which again is v to the 1.4, multiplied by the derivative of p with respect to time, which will be just dp dt. Over on the right-hand side, we have a constant. And of course, the derivative of a constant with respect to time will equal 0. We'll notice that the question is asking us for the rate that the volume is increasing. And again, since that's a rate, we're going to have the derivative with respect to time. And the quantity in question is volume. So we're looking to solve for dv dt, which shows up right here in our equation. So maybe we could subtract this term first over to the right-hand side. And then to isolate dv dt, what we can do is divide both sides of the equation by the term p times this 1.4 v to the 0.4. And we'll have to do it on both sides, of course. And when we do that, that term will cancel out on the left-hand side, and that's going to leave dv dt. And now that we have isolated dv dt, we can plug in the known values that we listed at the beginning of the problem. So we have a negative sign here, and then the v is 400. That'll be raised to the 1.4. dp dt, as noted, was negative 10. p was 80. And then once again, we have V being 400. So then you could pick up your calculator and very carefully plug this all in. And when you do that, you get about 35.7. And as for the units, we have volume over time. Volume was measured in centimeters cubed. And that'll be over the time, which was measured in minutes. So this would be the correct unit. Notice that the answer came out to be a positive 35.7 which tells us that the volume is indeed increasing at this instant because it has that positive value.